Adam Bona is really coming into form as 2023 kicks off, so let's take a look at the Nigerian-born Turkish big man. This is Florence Ceiling, let's break him down. At 6 foot 10, 235 pounds, with a wingspan around 7 foot 3, Bona has all the physical tools to be a center in the NBA. The UCLA big is coming off a strong run of play and is increasingly playing more minutes in Westwood. Part of that is because he is very efficient in a low usage role. If you watch a Bruins game, the ball doesn't go through Bona all that much. A lot of the stuff he does is what you're seeing right now. He'll catch the ball and finish at the rim, and he does this way better than any of UCLA's other centers. Almost 9 in 10 of bonus shots come at the rim, and he's converting on 70% of those looks. A solid number, but there's still room for improvement before the NCAA season wraps up. Comparing bonus figures at the basket to some of last year's bigs, we can see that Jalen Duran made 73% of his shots, Christian Coloco 74%, and Walker Kessler 78%. That's not to say Bona is the same player as these guys, but I think there's clear similarities and overlap in the roles they'll be asked to play, at least at times, in the NBA. Ensuring Bona's success will mean pairing him with a capable point guard, so maybe he takes a few seasons to really bloom. But I'm also impressed by the big man's ability to stay patient, roll hard, and finish through contact. On top of that, the Nigerian Turkish center can play above the rim with ease. Bona is a clear lob threat, but what I like the most in these clips is the motor and the coordination. At 6 foot 10, it's no shock that Bona can dunk, but I love how he jets down the floor, calls for the ball, and can leap off one or both feet to finish. Anytime I watch Bona, really, I end up taking note of his motor. One of the clearest ways it shows up on the floor is on the glass. Bona's rebounding numbers won't blow you away, two offensive boards and three defensive ones per game but his advanced numbers are solid enough. Also, I just focus on the multiple efforts and the willingness to play through contact in cramped spaces here. The double jump ability for Bona is real, and he doesn't mind wrestling with other bigs down low. When you look at his basketball journey, how hard he fights on the court really should be no surprise. Bona was born in Nigeria, and then moved to Turkey as a teenager where he developed his basketball skills. However, Bona couldn't play with his Turkish team at first, which meant that he was exclusively training and not playing any games for a couple of seasons. After getting his Turkish passport and playing for Turkey's youth teams in FIBA play, Bona then moved to prolific prep in California, Jalen Green's old school, where he worked his way into becoming a 5-star commit for UCLA. So far, Bona has played a pretty simple role at Poly Pavilion. Run the floor hard set tough screens and roll, crash the boards. And while he's done well there, I think Bona has shown other flashes throughout his basketball journey that are worthy of at least some consideration. All of these clips come from last summer's FIBA Under-20 European Championship, which Bona played with Turkey. The level of competition isn't the highest, but it's definitely not weak either, so all of these signs are very interesting to me. Bona can put the ball on the floor a little bit, and it might not be functional yet in the NBA or even college, but who knows down the line. I like how comfortable he is driving left, spinning right, and finishing. And then, I really love this possession, where it's an inverted pick and roll, the small sets the screen for Bona, and the UCLA center gets the bucket. Or this one here, as Bona pushes off the opponent miss, goes left in traffic, gathers the ball, and finishes in stride. I've also been encouraged by some of Bona's passing, but let's be clear, this is very hypothetical. Bona has 13 assists to 12 turnovers this season, which is good from a turnover standpoint, but it's not like he's constantly creating for others either. Still, I don't mind these passes at all. I like how quickly Bona reads and reacts, and not once is he pounding the air out of the ball or posting up for 15 seconds on any of these passes. This one, for instance, out of the short roll with the bounce pass to the dunker stands out to me. But to make a fair assessment of Bona, we also have to acknowledge his limitations right now. The biggest one is really that he cannot create for himself at all. Like I've said in other videos, this is not necessarily a bad thing, but just a reality of the situation. We see the flashes, but that's just that. Flashes. And when you take into account where the NBA is headed, you have to ask yourself. How highly do you value someone with Bona's skill set versus, for example, some sort of wing? 
Or do you even care about how much Bonus scores? Maybe you're never gonna run plays for him anyways, so he'll pick up his 8-10 to 10 points a night off scraps, which is definitely something he can do, and then add the rest of his impact on defense and on the glass. It's an interesting thought exercise to do, and even though I'll say right now that I'm all in on Bona as an NBA big, I do think that comes as a role player, so I'd likely start looking at him as soon as the draft's second round begins. Something else I want to see Bona improve over the next few months are his hands. This isn't an awful problem for him because it's not like he's fumbling passes every two minutes, but rather an easy avenue for him to become an even more efficient and impactful player. The numbers right now are in his favor. 70% at the rim like I mentioned is pretty good, but also like I said, with clear room for improvement. Bona needs to be feasting at the basket, so I want to see him really dominate there, because it's not like he's going to be shooting threes or making plays off the dribble. At quick glance, two things stand out. The first is that Bona's hands can be a little loose in traffic, so really it's just about becoming more secure in those situations. Then, the second one that is a bigger problem for me is that Bona is more comfortable gathering chest passes than bounce passes. The Turkish big can have some difficulties getting low to the ground to catch pocket passes, but this is something that he must absolutely work on given how pick and roll heavy his eventual role in the NBA is going to be. Adem Bona is an intriguing defensive prospect on the other side of the ball. Generally speaking, I like what I see from him and it all starts with his rim protection. The Nigerian Turkish big man is averaging 1.5 blocks per game. He's an impressive vertical athlete with a chiseled NBA ready frame and he takes up a lot of space around the basket. In his freshman season so far, Bona has been at his best on D when he's just asked to hang back and patrol the rim. We see that here for example. His 7 foot 3 wingspan, which might even be longer than that, comes into play in these situations against any player really. This play, where he fights Oscar Chibwe down low and then floats over to get the block, is impressive. Bona's rim protection instincts have also shown up in situations that I think can translate to pick and roll D. To be clear, these are still flashes and Bona needs to put them together like we'll see, but I like how disruptive he is in these clips. He breaks things up at the rim with his length and by doing so creates a look going down the other way for UCLA. Then, in the actual pick and roll, Bona still has some clear improvement points, more on that in a bit, but I like the overall package. Down the road, he should be able to hedge high or defend at the level given how mobile and long he is. The UCLA center has enough lateral quickness to stay with attackers in space. He does that versus a point guard here in Sky Clark. Bona strides from side to side, cover tons of ground, so for him, really it's just about timing and not falling for up fakes. The tools exist, and even though he is going to be 20 on draft day, Bona is still so early in his basketball developmental curve that I think there's plenty to be excited about in the future. At the same time, there's also a lot of coaching to do. Bona can be guilty of just taking strange angles when it comes to playing defense. Generally, it comes down to opening up his body too much. It's frustrating because the last couple of minutes just proved that Bona definitely has what it takes to be at least a good defender. He's big, bouncy, and precise enough to be a force at the rim, while also still being light on his feet to move around the floor. However, Bona can't always take advantage of these things because of his positioning. That really needs to improve still, and it's especially obvious when he's defending pick and rolls. Right now, Bona can still have a tough time positioning himself between the ball handler and the screener. The pick and roll is a cat and mouse game and he makes it too easy sometimes right now because he's not taking away the passing lanes. I also think that Bona can be more active showing his hands, and he should be more disciplined when playing at the level to prevent getting into foul trouble. Right now, that's his other big thing, as Bona is averaging 5.5 fouls per 40 minutes. I'm not worried about how these fouls are coming necessarily because there's not a massive trend that links them together. They're just unnecessary or unforced. What I worry about more is just the pure volume. Sometimes this pops up in important situations, so I'm always wary of this for possibly defensive-minded prospects. You're counting on them to anchor your team, and to do that, they need to stay on the floor. Bona is going to have to work on this aspect of his defense, but if he's able to put together his physical tools, motor, and timing, I think he can be a menace at the rim and very solid containing on the perimeter.
The pitch on Adam Bona is pretty straightforward in my opinion, and it all depends on what you value and where in the draft. Because Bona, I do think he's going to be a useful NBA player down the line. Probably a rotation big, but somebody who has, you know, a low usage, high efficiency role on offense, down the other end can contain smalls and wings. He will need some adjustment to guarding the pick and roll in the NBA, but I do think he'll be a solid rim protector. Now, with Bona, my range for him starts as soon as the second round begins, because that's where I'm just looking for somebody who's going to be able to play in the NBA, and I have confidence that Bona, even if it takes a few years, will definitely be able to do this. As always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure to subscribe, make sure to leave a comment telling me what you think of Adam Bona and where you would pick him in the draft, and if you enjoy the channel, if you want to see more content like this, make sure to subscribe. Take care, and I'll catch you guys next time.